If you're thinking of becoming a CFP professional, this video is for you. We're going to talk about some of the important things you would want to know as you decide whether or not to get the designation. And we'll also talk about some things that are important to know as you go through the process and as you maintain your designation over the years to come. In this video, we'll touch on what you do as a CFP professional, what the impact might be on your business or your career, whether you're self-employed or you're going to be an employee in another practice. Uh, some of the things just that you need to know as you go forward throughout the years. And then I'll tell you just a bit about my path and my reflections on having the designation. It's definitely a commitment to pursue your CFP marks. So it does take a lot of time and energy. There is some cost involved. You have to pay for those education programs, pay for the exam, that sort of thing. And there are, of course, ongoing requirements. So you don't just get the designation and then you're done. There are continuing education requirements and the rules and the standards can potentially change over time. So you need to keep up with those things and evolve with it and be okay with that. So once you sort of hitch your wagon to the CFP designation or the CFP certification, then you want to be sure that that's something that you can live with over the long term, because for better or worse, things change over time. And that exam is not to be underestimated. It is very difficult these days. It is now just a one day affair, which is nice, but it's not easy. They show the pass rates and you can look at how many people pass over time you can see that it's it's quite difficult for a lot of people to make it through this exam successfully but you're probably familiar with that and familiar with some of the benefits of getting the cfp mark so what do you actually do as a cfp it is of course financial planning so you are helping people with all of these different areas in their life. You're not necessarily a CFA or a chartered financial analyst who does a really deep dive on individual stocks and their financials, although you can do that sort of thing, nor are you an estate planning attorney. So you're not going to be drafting documents and there's maybe a limit to how far you want to go on specific legal discussions. You want to not practice law unless you are authorized to practice law in your state but what you do is you work with people on these really important big picture items and help them figure out where they're going and how they're going to get there and then come up with ideas and put those into place and monitor and make changes as life throws curveballs and as the laws change and different opportunities become available it is uh, really an interesting and rewarding thing to do with people so you do, again, gain some knowledge on these main areas of focus, but what tends to happen is you probably pick a niche or you probably end up getting into some sort of specialty over time, and that is where you're going to devote a lot of attention and get into depth with people on a particular topic. So that might be, for example, figuring out their student loans or helping people plan for retirement or helping people with the cash flow and budgeting type things, whatever it is that you happen to develop your expertise in and get a lot of experience in is something that you can devote yourself to. People often wonder what is the impact going to be professionally once you successfully complete all of the different steps. And again, those are those four E's of getting the certification. Well, you first of all, you learn a lot. And so with that knowledge, it just helps you be a better financial planner. You have a big picture view of all of these different things and how they fit together. So you're well equipped to help people navigate the complexities of their financial lives. Now, do you get instant clients and does the phone start ringing or do you start getting emails or web inquiries just because you successfully get those letters after your name? As you probably know, the answer is no. So there are a lot of people who are very successful, let's say salespeople, who just don't have the CFP marks. And so getting those marks doesn't necessarily mean that you will have a lot of clients. The financial planning world is pretty much still a relationship business. That doesn't mean you have to be a salesperson, but there are things that have to happen for somebody to come and work with you. And getting the CFP certification by itself probably 
won't accomplish that. But it does add some credibility. It is absolutely a credibility booster, very helpful in those discussions, and some people are specifically looking for a certified financial planner professional. If you are looking to get a job at a financial planning firm, maybe you're just starting out your career or transitioning into this industry, well, having that CFP certification can certainly be helpful. That might actually be a job requirement. So that's gonna help you get a foot in the door and begin on your career path. As you go down the road towards certification, you'll want to get familiar with the ethics and the standards and, and all of the different guidelines that the CFP board has for you. Because it's, no, it's not worth going through all the trouble and the expense and passing the exam if those aren't standards and rules that you want to follow. Now, a lot of this is there are things that you would want to do anyway just to be a good financial planner. So being a fiduciary, making sure that you have the knowledge to practice in the areas you're helping people with and making sure you know what your limitations are and when you can send somebody to some somebody else and just being transparent. All of these things are probably things that you want to do anyway, but you want to at least be aware of what all of those rules are. So, you know, read, read carefully what the CFP board provides for you and make sure that that works for you. Again, you've got that experience requirement that takes several years to satisfy, plus all the you know, time and energy and money to complete this. We don't want you to be, you know, two or three years down the road and finding out that this isn't the perfect fit for you. Just one example of that is the definition of compensation. This is something that's been a big deal in recent years. So are you a fee-only financial advisor? Are you fee-based? Are you using commissions? Whatever it is, you have to make sure that you explain that to clients clearly. And that can be pretty complicating. And, and I've heard stories where it's uh, kind of frustrating for people. Maybe they are married to a real estate agent who gets commissions. This isn't, you know, I'm not part of the CFP board. I can't make a judgment on this. But what I have heard anecdotally is that that can impact your ability to be what's called a fee only financial planner under the CFP board's rules or under their definition of that term. So again, you want to really dig into the details and make sure you know what you're getting yourself into and, and kind of plan ahead for all of these different things that may come up. So just to paint a picture of one person's path in terms of getting the certification and using it, I guess I became a CFP certificate first in 2010. So I took the exam in 2009. And before that, I was doing the education portion for probably about four or five years. I took it very slow. I was working as a financial advisor, but I did go ahead and take those courses and begin just doing them one at a time and kind of working through it slowly so that I was able to devote my time to working with clients and working in the practice that I was in. And, and that worked well for me. I don't know that it works well for everybody else. If you are in a financial planning program at a university, for example, that's a different way of going about it, and that's a perfectly good way of going about it. Uh, in fact, I can see some advantages to that for sure. Like I mentioned before, I learned a lot through the process. So I was already working with clients, but with each class, with each part of the educational program, I was getting more and more skills under my belt to help and find things and identify opportunities or hopefully prevent some problems for clients. So it was definitely a beneficial thing for me to go through even before uh, taking the exam or actually getting the certification. You can learn a lot of these things yourself, so you don't necessarily need to go through a structured program and get the CFP marks, but it is helpful to have a structured educational curriculum that you follow. But again, you could learn all of this yourself. You can do YouTube videos and, and read uh, websites and read books and articles and go to webinars and get a lot of good information. But again, doing it in a structured way can often be helpful because that makes sure that you don't miss a couple of details here and there. So I think that the CFP education program is definitely beneficial. 
And when it comes to that exam, having some structure helps as well. Again, I had been working as an advisor for, I don't know how many years, at least five, let's say, before I took the exam in 2009. And what I would say is that when you take the test, as with any test, you need to be in test taking mode. So you might know what a good answer is. You might know how you would handle it or how you have handled it for lots of clients in the past. But what you need to do when you get those test questions is to answer it in the way that the, the test wants you to answer it. So that can be tricky and that probably explains why some people don't pass the test, why a good percentage of people don't pass. But again, going through that structured program gives you a way to think of this and make sure that you're going about it in the academic way first and then you can go at it in a practice oriented way as you develop your skills. So I hope that is helpful and I wish you the best as you proceed towards your CFP certification. It's a, again a rewarding thing to do and you will thank yourself afterward. Please subscribe to this channel. It doesn't cost you anything to do that and it helps you stay up to date on things like this. Plus it helps me out a tiny bit so thank you for doing that and thanks to everybody who's already subscribed.